Het blijft een van de vreemdste gewaarwordingen op dit continent. Waar ik ook ga, overal kom ik nu Chinezen tegen. Zelfs in het hoge noorden van Zambia, waar de Chinezen sinds een aantal jaren een roestige kopen mee runnen. So, how long have you been here in Zambia? Three years. Three years. Do you like it? Yeah. Yeah? You do? Yeah. Zambia is very good. Really? Yeah. Why? You eat very quickly. Yeah. You, you're, you're in a hurry. Uh-huh. Are you in a hurry? No. No? Because everything I'm doing here is faster, faster. Fast, fast, fast. fast. Yeah, fast. Really? Yeah. Why? It's a habit. It's a habit? Yeah. But don't Zambians tell you to slow down a little bit. But, you know, habit is not easy to change. <laughs> it's with my life. Okay. <laughs> so what is it that you learned from the Zambians? Did mm -hmm. you learn anything? Yeah, a lot. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. Tell me. Culture. Hmm? Culture and the language. Bemba. A culture? Bemba. Can you speak Bemba? A little bit. Can you tell me uh, the food is very nice? Not this one. <laughs> For greeting. <laughs> what can you say in Memba? We know. Very good. Yeah. So, are you here with your family or did you come by yourself? Uh, I'm alone. Alone? Yeah. No husband? No husband. Not yet. In the future. <laughs> Can you maybe find somebody here? Yeah, I yeah? have a boyfriend here. Are you look, oh, you have a boyfriend here? Yeah. Okay. Was Zambian or Chinese? Mm, Chinese. Oh. Could you um, come home with a Zambian boyfriend? Would that be okay? Um, for my parents. Yeah? Uh, no, my parents are not like that. No? <laughs> yeah. My parents said it's better Chinese. Oh, speak really? Chinese. Uh -huh. Not a foreigner. They don't want the Zambian. <laughs> no, not foreigner. Just the uh, Chinese. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Because That's for language, they cannot speak English. That's true. Yeah. How long is your lunch hour? Um, depends oh. us. If oh. I finish, okay. How, how fast you eat? Yeah, fast. Because they're all leaving, they're very quick. Yeah, Chinese Everybody. eat food. <laughs> Yo, I can't eat this quick, look at you. Yeah, if I'm not coffee, already finished. De vriendschap tussen China en Zambia is niet van gisteren. Toen dit land in 1964 onafhankelijk werd van de Britten, stonden de Chinezen als eerste in de rij om de Zambianen vooruit te helpen. Hun cadeau was het symbool van de vooruitgang. Een trein. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. What seems to be the problem? There was some leakage. All the action of my family. Can you read Chinese? <laughs> no, no, no. How, how are you going to know all you fit all the parts properly? Uh, the way interpreters. 
Oh, really? Somebody is talking in Chinese, uh -huh. then interpreter uh -huh. in English. Okay, and, and, and the signs on the engine, are they in English or in Chinese? In English. English. Some and are some. He says English. Chinese, you say English. English and Chinese. English Chinese. and Chinese. Yes. yes. So uh, do, does this one have a name? Yeah, Dung Fang Wo. Dung Fang Wo. Yeah. What, that's Chinese. What, yeah, what? that is Chinese, which means uh, the no East reason. is red. The East is ready. Yes, Dung Fang Wo. This one. Is Zambia ready also? <laughs> is <that laughs> or is it only the East that's ready? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> How old is this one? Oh, these were brought in 1972. 1972? Yes, sir. dat je een land pas echt kan leren kennen als je per trein reist. Maar op deze trein kun je iets leren over drie landen. Over Tanzania, Zambia en China. Dat zijn de drie landen die deze trein gebouwd hebben eind jaren 60. Kijk, zo loopt hij. Volletje gekregen. Daar staan we mooi bij uitgelegd. Van Dar es Salaam, dwars door Tanzania, dan de grens over door Zambia. En dan eindigt hij uiteindelijk hier bij de Kopperbelt. En ze noemden het de Freedom Railway. Do you know the history of this train? A bit. What's the story? Um, Tazara was constructed sometime in 1971-72 by the Zambian government in conjunction with the Chinese government and the Tanzanian government. There was the declaration of UDI when there were sanctions between Zambia and South Africa. You couldn't access South Africa port at that time. You That's were closed we, off? We were closed off, sealed off. You could not go and go and go. Yeah. Mm. There, were, there, were, there were wars around this country. There was war in Angola, war in Zimbabwe, war in South Africa, war in Mozambique. And the only friendly country to the port was in Tanzania. That was Dar es Salaam. So the Chinese saved you? The Chinese saved us. It was cheap to use the Chinese construction and the British and the other countries. Chinese saved us. This rail line came in under communism, but the life is capitalist. If you want to be free and relaxed and enjoy life, go capitalism. You? Of course, that's what I'm saying. But, Capitalism. But the, but the Chinese are communists. They are communists. They are pretending. Yes. They, are, they are buying uh, General Motors. They are buying this. They are buying that. Now they are making uh, hammers in, uh, in China. Well, I suspect that's why yes. there is the influx of Chinese. If it is free. It, there must be a clause somewhere which mm. says uh, Chinese must uh, come in and as anyway, a clause they must come in Zambia without uh, blocking them uh -huh. so that they can come and benefit out of uh, the construction of this rail line. Uh -huh. It must be there. So 40 years later you're paying back? We're paying back the hard way. And you can talk about the Chinese today no government will react because of those strings attached that were tight that time. De komst van de Chinezen naar Afrika heeft voor dit dorp een enorme impact gehad toen in. 2005 een explosieve fabriek, niet ver hier vandaan, gerund door de Chinezen, ontplofte. En veel van de veiligheidsvoorschriften die gelden voor dat soort fabrieken, waren niet nageleefd. 46 doden, maar heel van die werknemers die kwamen hier vandaan. Dat accident gebeurde, dat is toen mijn dochter was. 
was involved there. What what happened there? Actually, I don't know, but it was an explosion. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, what happened exactly, I don't know. You don't know why it exploded? Yes. Yeah. I don't know what caused the explosion. But what I know, it is an explosion that killed my, my daughter. This is the grave of my daughter. This is where my daughter was buried. This is my daughter. This is the grave of my daughter. Do you come here often still? I don't. I don't. You don't want to? I don't come. She was very young still, huh? She was very young. She was the one in 1981. Yeah. The 20, 24. Born on 9th March 1981. There's, there's so many Chinese everywhere. Well, when you see them, do you, do you feel angry? <laughs> you know, when such things, such things happen, you may feel angry to somebody, but being a human being is very difficult. Because even the Chinese, I wouldn't say they, they did this deliberately, I don't know. But being a, a, a person and a human being, I can't hate them. Because if this happened because of somebody's negligence, I'm sure one day you also die. You also die. So if uh, it was deri deliberately done, I'm very sorry to a person who can do that because one day you face the same consequences. She will, he will die. He, she or him will die. Yeah. Does that mean that you have forgiven them? It's not necessarily forgiving them. I'm just saying, because uh, I'm a Christian, I know what, God's, what God has said. Don't kill, and you never revenge. Don't revenge, yes, don't revenge. God, the Almighty God, is the one who is going to revenge for me, not me. Niet alle Zambianen zijn zo vergevingsgezind. Het ongeluk bij de Chinese fabriek wordt in dit land gezien als symbool voor de slechte werkomstandigheden die de Chinezen uit eigen land meenemen. Als ik vroeg in de ochtend naar de markt ga, voel ik overal het ongemak over de Chinezen en hun koopwaar. Why did you come so early? <笑>你来赞比亚多久了 
就是说给以前，其实没给钱，就是说给钱。嗯、呃，尽量是嗯，就、呃、就是尽量跟他们就是很少争执嘛。啊啊。那就临时用。没有人知道，没有人知道，对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对？对不对Uh, so it's difficult to make money out it's of it. It's difficult to make money. But why do you buy from the Chinese? Nowhere else we can buy. You can't buy the Zambian farmer? Uh, Zambian farmers, there are, are not many who are, who are, who are keeping chickens. Oh. How's business? Business is at least a little bit slow. It's a bit slow? Yes. So why do Zambians not making their own chickens? I don't know how I can even tell it. We Zambians are failing to keep our own chickens. Maybe it's because of income. You know, our incomes, we have less incomes. The Chinese have got more, you know. These investors, you know, come with a lot of money. So they buy in bulk. So as a result, you know, they have built a good market. And they have brought, in fact, it's more like they're employing people. Sometimes I cannot blame them. Well, some who are coming to, to buy chickens. Some don't even pay cash. They just get sale. After they sell, they pay the Chinese. So it's like it's form of employment again. Hello? 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 We don't do it. Where are you We rijden nu naar het huis van de vicepresident van Zambia. En zijn partij kwam in 2011 aan de macht met een campagne tegen de Chinese investeringen hier in Zambia. En ook al zijn de Chinezen overal actief op het continent, het is heel ongewoon voor een partij om zich daar zo hard tegen te verzetten. En wat nog bijzonderder is, is dat dit de enige vicepresident is in heel Afrika die blank is. Thank you very much. Mr. Scott. Sir. I presume. Absolutely. <laughs> How are you doing? Oh, yeah. <coughs> very good to see you. Bram. Hi, Bram. Nice to Pleased meet you. Nice to meet you. What a wonderful place you got here. It's very nice. We're actually in the middle of a forest reserve. Is it? A very small plot in the middle of a forest reserve. But ah. it's, as you can see, it's trees and more trees. Is this, is this the old house of, of your parents? No, this was a house, uh, the, in fact, I, uh, this is a small farm that I bought off a departing civil, white civil servant in 1966 uh, for a very small amount of money. And it had one thatched hut on it and a toilet outside in the, under a tree. That but was a long time ago, you, yes. But you, you are a real Zambian, right? I was born in Zambia. Yeah, as Zambian as it gets. That's a school picture in Zimbabwe. I, I, I didn't so you went to school uh, in, uh, in Zimbabwe? In what was then Southern Rhodesia. Southern Rhodesia. Which was later Rhodesia, which was later Zimbabwe. Yes, and how was that? Uh, a bit like being a member of the Hitler Youth, actually. Really? Yeah, it was very, very, you see, they're all white. Yeah. Uh, that was the height of, I think the height, it was actually a very racialistic place, Rhodesia, Southern Rhodesia was. A lot of people justifying themselves on all sorts of bogus theories of racial superiority, etc., etc. Mm -hmm. And that's what I, I mean, that was certainly part of the culture. <coughs> uh, I thought that black boys should be allowed to go there and even black girls and white girls. And you told them that? I told them that, yes. And what did they say? They said I was a traitor to the nation, a traitor to the, to the class or something, a traitor to the, traitor to the race. This is the latest... Uh, 
album, if you like, a single page of the Zambian cabinet, the Zambian government, our president, Michael Silifusata. And there you are. a white man there in the middle, and one is on a, on, on a line all by himself, the vice president. Yeah. Do you ever look at this picture thinking, how on earth did I end up there? Yes, I sometimes look at it and congratulate myself on my planning and my hard work. Yes, because I think, I don't think it was just purely by standing around and waiting for an accident that I got there. Uh, I gave up a lot of things and decided to work, and there I am. The biggest problem with the Chinese is that we suspected a lot of corruption in the obtaining of work permits, for example. A lot of ex repatriation of monies that should have been paid in taxes. A lot of illegal immigration in terms of, I mean, there are a lot of small farmers putting Zambians out of business, small Chinese farmers scattered across the country, but particularly around the cities like uh, Lusaka. And we have an issue that, you know, it's an issue and it needs to be attended to. Some, some countries have attended to it quite promptly, like Botswana. Um, others like us have taken a slightly relaxed point of view, I think. But they have a different work ethic than, let's say, Western companies or...? I think so. I think they themselves have a phrase which means eating bitterness, which is the philosophy that we have to eat bitterness before we can eat sweets or whatever. And they, and, but they, it's not a, so much a philosophy is that they, the terms in which they're sent here is to get the job done and the money gets banked in China. So they don't come here to fish at the weekend, right? They don't. I mean, a South African manager, if he comes up here to do a road contract or something like that, can expect to get a, a four by four bucky, a, 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 a pickup, uh, and go go fishing at the weekend. Right? And we've got beautiful fishing in Zambia. We've got the, some of the best rivers in the world. Uh, but the Chinese regard this all as very, very irresponsible. Right? They, they would prefer to work for seven days. They're always complaining that the Zambians also want to go and see their families at the weekend. And Why so is it just lazy? What they think? Well, they'll say things like that, or you know, they they haven't learned to eat bitterness yet. Is it hard work? Where well, some of the conditions are not good. The ventilation is very poor. Sometimes you feel the pot is very exhausted, very fast. Yes. But if the ventilation is well, uh, you can last for more than five to six hours. We do pray that uh, sometime maybe in the near future things are going to be okay. I hope so. Yeah. Anyway, there is hope. Look, look after yourselves, oké? Okay? Thank you very much. Good day. Het is niet de eerste keer dat ik in een, in een mijn ben. De andere mijnen lagen allemaal in Zuid-Afrika. En vergeleken bij die mijnen is dit echt aftans hoor. De ventilatie is heel slecht. Je ziet ook aan de mijnwerkers hoe ze staan te zweten. Ze zijn vaak nog gewoon met, met de schop en houwelen bezig om de rots hier weg te hangen. Het is echt keihard werken hier beneden. What is it like to work for a Chinese boss? 
Well, I can say it's a challenge. It's challenging. What's the challenge? Uh, the challenge is that uh, when you compare with the other companies, you find that other companies are doing better than the Chinese company. Doing better? As in work conditions. When it comes to work conditions. What do you mean? Uh, it encompasses a lot of things. We can talk about uh, just the salary itself. Salary is low? Yeah, the salary is low. Compared to uh, other uh, copper producing mining here in Zambia. Then why do you come and work here? It's actually to, to and actually I'm gaining experience. It's about experience here. The Zambian worker was complaining about his salary while you were standing there. What do you think about that? Zambia, this但是他们抱怨他们的工资低我们因为我也不是第一次听说不是今年第一次听说在这之前我们也听说就是因为他们抱怨他们的工资低所以我们要经过多方的跟他们谈判多次的跟他们谈判沟通然后来解决这个问题
you know, when my dad bought me a T-shirt uh, uh, from a shop, there was nothing written on, the, on that T-shirt and there was no label. So because everything, I, you know, we used to, to, to use at home were made in China. So because there was nothing written on the T-shirt, so I got a mark I wrote at my back, made in China. <laughs> at a 10 year, when I was only 10 years old. So from that time, actually, all my friends and my family uh, members, they started calling me Mr. Made in China. <laughs> <laughs> Not knowing that I had to do 20 years later, I would be made in China, you know? So, so you are, because you are made in China. Yeah, I'm really made in China, yes. Man made in China. Yes. So made in China for you was success. It was a big success for me. Yes, so I'll show you inside the house. This is my home bar. <laughs> and you know, I, I don't know how, my, how good you are at this game. If you want, you can even play. We can try. Can, can you put some, 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 you know, some, there's some balls there. Oh, yeah, here. Yes. You know, we can even show you this, how, how my, my skills, <laughs> my skills, yeah. Watch it, you know, keep it decent, <laughs> keep it decent. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I got you. One one. <laughs> so one one, yeah? Okay, very good. Very good. Fair enough. Fair enough. That was good. So what is it that you do in China? What I do in China is I, I uh, as I said, I do textiles. Textiles? Yes. What a Zambian bringing textiles to China? Uh, yes. With like I started this business ten years ago with my Chinese partner after working in China for like over 10 years. So this is how I ended up, you know, starting a textile company in China. Most of the people expect Chinese to come and invest in Africa. But for me, I took it the opposite way. But are you saying that you would not have had all of this, the big TV, the swimming pool, this bar, uh, had it not been for China, or could you have made it here in Zambia as well? Uh, it's a very difficult to say, but I would say it would have been very difficult for me to, to make it here in Zambia. But for, I, I believe that my, my, my going to China has helped me a lot to secure some of these properties which I have right, right now. Actually, even in China, I have several properties, like I think I have three big mansions similar to this. Yes. Ah, see, this is a lot of weights, but... Not bad. Chinese are business people. They want to make money. They want to make profit. So it's up to the government, our local government, our Zambian government to see how they can implement certain policies. Like when the Chinese are coming here, they should come here to invest. At the same time, they should partner with the local people. Yeah. Because by, by, by partnering with the local people, you find that in the long term, the, econ the Zambian economy will, will, will be in the local people's hands. By, but right now, it looks like most of the economy is in the foreigners, which I feel is not a good way for any developing like, country. So what you do in China, partnering with the Chinese, this is Chinese ex should do with Zambia. Exactly. What in China, for a foreigner to do business on his own, it's a, we can say almost impossible. What the government is doing in China is they help the local people to secure even loans at a cheap rate, interest rate, so that they can compete with foreigners. because. Most of these foreigners, like Chinese foreigners, who are, Chinese people who are coming to Zambia. They are coming with maybe, the interest rate they are borrowing money in China is only maybe 6%. But the local people here, they are borrowing money at 18 to 20%. So it's unfair competition. It's a very unfair competition. So that's why I always encourage my, our government to put up certain policies which can favor the local people. What's in there? Piece of chicken. Chicken. You're going to sell them? Yes. Ah, so you, you take this train and you go to the next station and you sell them there. <laughs> Can I see what's in? Can I see? Ah, all right. You already made them. I did. Oh, here we go. Good luck. Thank you. Good luck.
Hello. Hello. How's it going? Yeah, hello. Hi. How are you? Yeah, fine. Thank you. You're tall. Yes. Huh? I'm tall. I want almost two meters. <laughs> How tall are you? I'm two meters. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> You're taller than me. I'm from 1.8. <laughs> okay. it, uh, it feels a little bit like China here. Pardon? This place feels like China. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Where are you going? <laughs> uh, okay. Okay. This is your house. Do you have any pictures of your family? My wife, ah, my daughter. Very nice. This very young baby. I just have a initial break just three months ago. That's the last time when you saw them? Yeah. Yeah, but maybe I think that's a custom. <laughs> How is it for your wife that you so long away? Maybe he maybe focus on her, my daughter. <laughs> maybe he, not before. Before we maybe we t we didn't need uh, we we don't uh, have the ch child. Maybe he miss me very much. But now we focus on our child. Oh, she's, she's fine. <laughs> with the, she's fine with the child. Uh, yeah, it doesn't so, miss you. Uh, yeah. So I think so. Maybe sometimes. <laughs> so, <or> sometimes. <laughs> maybe a little bit. Yeah. Does some. she does she ever say that she misses you? Yeah, of course. Sometimes we will chat. Sometimes. Er gebeurde hier net iets uh, heel opmerkelijks. Een van de Chinezen die hier woonde op de compound kwam naar mij toe en zei... Ik kan het zelf niet voor de camera vertellen, dus jij moet het vertellen. Maar ik vind dit hier verschrikkelijk. Het is als een soort gevangenis hier. S'avonds mogen we niet van de compound. Iedere avond moeten we met dezelfde groep mensen hetzelfde programma afwerken. We mogen niet terug naar China wanneer we dat zelf willen. Soms moeten ze hier tien maanden achtereen... Elke dag werken en pas dan mogen ze een keer terug om hun familie te bezoeken. Relaties gaan eraan. Eén van de mannen hier op de compound is inmiddels zo doorgedraaid dat hij al twee jaar naar hetzelfde liedje zit te luisteren. En, zei de Chinees, jullie hebben het wel steeds over hoe de Zambianen vergaat sinds de Chinezen naar Afrika zijn gekomen. Maar niemand vertelt het verhaal over hoe het met ons gaat. Hello. Good evening. What are you doing? It's yes, we're doing the rehearsal. For? For, uh, for the Chinese Luda New Year's, uh, you know, affair, a star ah, affair. Okay. Yeah, so all, all the sister companies, all the staff, we will come together to celebrate. Special, yes. special dance this one. Yes. Is it difficult? It's not, because we dance at the pro playground every day. Oh, okay. Now we just put on our clothes. Oh, so you, you've yes, done it many times already? Yes. It's, it is like a daily exercises. Daily exercise. Yes, every day after dinner, we dance. You know, every to, day. Yes, every day, every evening. Doesn't that get a little bit boring? No, it's okay because we have new, different things to learn. Yeah. You know, maybe one dance we dance for three or four times, and the next week, you know, we have to learn other things, and also um, to make our daily life colorful and interesting. Is it colorful and interesting? Yeah, compared to nothing to do, it is good. <laughs> <laughs> so the dancing keeps you a little bit sane. Yes. You come here every night? Uh, every no, night? it depends. Of what? Uh, yeah, sometimes if we have something else to do, so we will on leave. Okay. If we have time, can participate in this dance. 
Okay. Because you know, after working off, we have no other, you know, how to say that entertainment. Yeah. Activities. Activities. Yeah, at mm. So we just participate in this dance. But just going into town. Uh, you know, sometimes at night it's not safe to go outside. But are you are you allowed to? to do yeah, that it's fine. Night? It's fine. But we think it's better stay here because we are dancing. You know, even for the exercise, sometimes. But do you, do you think it's not safe, or do they tell you it's not safe? Uh, no, someone go outside and he was uh, hurt by some you know, local. Imp- oh really? Yeah. By, by Zambians. Yeah, by Zambians. What so, happened? Uh, it's accident. Uh, some locals hit our Chinese employees, so. We are afraid, so it's better to stay here. When did this happen? Uh, I'm sorry, we started. Yeah, to start. Okay. Thank you for watching. For more on this subject, take a look at the playlist. You can also watch this recommended video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and we'll keep you updated on our documentaries.